Today, I got this pretty refreshing fantasy book. Hello, fellow plot questers. It is I, Aaron the Plot Quester, and today I got this great book, The False Prince, by Jennifer A. Nielsen herself. And well, let's get right into it. Choose to lie. Or choose to die. So, the main character is Sage. He's an orphan boy who just gets picked up by this gentlemanly noble guy who's apparently one of the king's regents, and his name is Connor. And basically what he wants to do is he wants to set up a bunch of boys. And basically what he wants to do is he wants to set up a fake prince. Because you see, this, this one of the prince's sons, King Jaren, or Prince Jaren, he, well, he disappeared. Like, he got attacked by pirates and we're fairly sure he's dead. We've got like a 10% chance that he's alive, but we're fairly sure he's dead. And so basically what that means is that you it's very convenient for you to come up with a new little kid that looks about looks like Jaren and basically pretend that he's Jaren. So basically what Connor wants to do is number one, he wants to grab a bunch of orphans off the streets. Number two, make a prince out of them. Number three, make the purse that prince the king and rule from behind like some marionette master. So basically he's a freaked up dude. And now, what's going on is that Sage and these other two kids are going through these, like, little lessons with, like, sword play, horse riding, languages, and all sorts of stuff that they have to learn to pretend to be King Jaren. And there's a bunch of stuff in between, and finally, he chooses the main character, Sage, to be, you know, the king. And then we find out that... Okay, by the way, guys, if, if you don't want to be spoiled with the book, because that's, like, the really good part about the book, you should have watched the rest of this video. Because the twist is what makes the book good. So you had your warning, okay? Basically, Sage is Prince Jaren. And he is Prince Jaren in disguise. And he had been sent away from the castle by his father as a sort of backup procedure in case the royal family was murdered. Which they were. And also he had been sent away because the thing is he had supposedly been killed by Avanian pirates and if he came back then his father would have to go full on revenge war mode to you know Avania and there had been a war and wars are not great for you know for kingdoms so basically he was like back in procedure plus um a way to not you know make the countries go at each other with swords and spears so that, that's convenient and now, since his royal family was dead, he had come back to reclaim his spot on the throne. Now, obviously, I was really, really surprised when I found out that he was the main, he was the main character that we've been following along for like 200 pages, is the actual king. He's the actual heir. He, he is the royal family. Like, we, like, yeah, and honestly, I feel like it makes a lot of sense. Because if that just came out of nowhere, you know, you would have been surprised, but also sort of saw that, oh, that's ridiculous, you know what I mean? But there were a lot of indicators that sort of suggested that he might be the king, might be the prince. One of the first indicators was the thing with the sword. He was really familiar with the replica of supposedly the sword that King a Prince Jaren had used. So basically, he was comfortable with the replica of his own sword. And also, while he pretended to be terrible at sword fighting, he always sometimes got these decisive blows that could perhaps mean that he's been repressing his sword fighting skills, which make a lot of sense. And when his life is threatened, he actually moves really quickly and cuts through that crap. So, in other words, in Crisis, he suddenly fights well, like, wait a minute, is that plot armor? Or is that something else? Good point, right? And also, there's a the thing about the Golden Stone. You see, basically, he has this stone in his pocket that Connor takes, basically to try to basically say, I own you so I can do whatever I want. And basically, what the main character does, he defies him, takes it, hides it, and does this all sort of huge ton load of crap that makes him get into trouble with and put in the dungeon. And he came back, of course, and I told you how it ends, but why did he go through that? It's, it's not even actual gold, it's just a little rock. However, apparently this was an indicator for the Chamberlain, or uh, this this guy who, who's in the court, I'm not sure what he is, I actually forgot, rip. And basically, this guy was told by the old king, and the king basically went, hey, you know, 
when, when we, if we die, if we die, then a lot of people will come and say, oh, we're, ki we're the prince, we're the lost prince, yo, uh, yeah, so make me the king, yeah, um, I'm, 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 the, I'm, the, I'm the prince. Yeah, so basically, you know what I mean. So a lot of people were to pretend to be the actual prince. And basically what he did was, he said, the, the person, the person who comes up to you and says that this worthless piece of stone is gold, that person, that is the indicator that you will have to find to find the actual heir and that person is the actual prince. Makes a lot of sense. So, devastating twist. And so basically what just basically happened was that he did, he did the indicator where he went, this is gold. And you know, the, the guy who got that information from the king went, okay, he actually is the prince and the book ends with celebrating. And as uh, I wouldn't have appreciated this book as much if I'm not trying to write one, if I'm being honest, because I really appreciate those like predetermined plot points that she set up. She, I think, right? She set up to for the ending of the book so that it would all sort of come together and make sense at the end. I know because I'm trying to do that, and that's not easy at all. And she did this perfectly. So that's why at the first half of the book, I was just like, okay, this is interesting, but this is just like, you know, typical. It's like a watered down PG version of The Hunger Games and Mask of Shadows. If I can find it, yeah, a Ma Mask of Shadows, because, you know, that's also sort of similar storyline. I was like, oh, it's just a typical Hunger Games wannabe. And then it turned to that, that twist at the end with a little flip, and I was really surprised, pleasantly surprised. And you know, it takes a lot to trick me because I'm actually a really, really perceptive reader who picks up pretty much everything while I'm reading. So honestly, I was really, really surprised and happy because of that twist, and I think that it's masterfully delivered as well so that it doesn't come out of nowhere. But it's still enough to just go, <gasps> wait, are you st Yeah, so you got my point. And all in all, this is a book that is worth reading. And hopefully I haven't spoiled it for you because if I did, then I feel sorry for you because the twist is really what makes the book good. And it's a really, really great book. I highly recommend it. Apparently there's a sequel to this. I'm probably going to buy that really, really quickly and read it. And yeah, so the twist is good. Like I, I've already said that 12 times. Yay. And anyway, so great book, a must read, and like always, your plot quester, Aaron the plot quester. It is not easy, guys, to set the stage for such a perfect little twist, and it was done perfectly. Mm -hmm.